Hello, hello. A couple of announcements today. I have three announcements today. The two of them are going to come at the end. One's going to come right now. I, um, I've i never been anything but blonde in my life. <laughs> and I decided I wanted to try some red. So I went yesterday and I ended up purple somehow. Do you see that with the light? Let me turn it just a little bit that way. Yeah, you see that? <laughs> So anyway, I think I'm sticking with it. Like, why not be purple? You know, in the emergency department, I'm all covered up. Nobody can see anyway. <laughs> so that's number one. Um, I'm here in beautiful Walla Walla, Washington at our friend's winery. I don't know if you can see this out there. Beautiful. Um, my son turned nine today, which seems crazy. My oldest over here, as they call it, at the wine farm. <laughs> Hi there. Um, drop a hello if you are seeing me. Drop a live if you're watching live. Replay if you're watching replay. Give me a thumbs up if you think I should keep my purple hair or if you think I should go and get the red that I was hoping for. <laughs> I um, adore my hairdresser, and she started drawing it, and she goes, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. What do you think? What do you think? You can't really see it very well, but it's tinged purple. Okay. So that's my announcement number one. Um, <laughs> I Today, we are going to talk a little bit about... Um, oh, we've got some thumbs up on the hair. Thank you. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about like emotional food and emotionality of food and what we should do about that. So for those of you who may not know me, I'm Heather Hammerstead. I'm an emergency medicine physician, lifestyle medicine physician, double boarded. Um, I have a certification as an inter integrative nutrition coach. I've been a health coach since, well, I won't date myself, but about 16, 17 years. Um, I love food. I love coaching about food. More importantly, I'm super nerdy about the science around how our bodies and brains work around food, why we make the decisions we do, and why we're kind of all stuck with this weight problem. So um, let's talk about it. Okay. Oh, someone gave me a Bafford. All right. So today let's address the elephant in the room, your love affair with food. Sugar is a reward. Alcohol is a reward. Eating to distract or hide your emotions. Being a foodie, let's stop it, <laughs> okay? Uh, food is important, right? Food should taste good. It should fuel your body and mind to function efficiently and effectively. It should provide the tools to balance your physiology and your emotions. It should not be a reward for something you do or didn't do. Remember that in parenting because <laughs> you are sowing the seeds for where we are right now for them. Um, it should not be solace or replacement for something or someone. If you need that reward, solace, or replacement, then find a way to get it that doesn't involve messing up your body and not feeling the way your body wants to feel. Like, what do you really get out of it by indulging in the food? Did you fix the problem? Do you really feel better? Break up with food. You don't deserve dessert. <laughs> dessert does not deserve you, okay? Dessert does not love you. You deserve you. Make the choices you want to make to get the results that you want, not just in weight loss, but for your life, your productivity, your emotional stability, for your whole you, right? It's so commonplace in our culture to glamorize our unhealthy relationships with food. We joke about it, but ultimately, you know, there's a deeper truth there that most of us don't want to face, right? We love food because of what we tell ourselves food does for us. Here's the thing. I'll say it again. Food does not love you. It doesn't care about you at all. It's completely one-sided relationship we have with the foods we love. Food is totally neutral. It's sitting there doing nothing. <laughs> it's our thoughts about the food that cause us to have trouble with our weight. So to review, pretty common kind of life coaching sort of cognitive behavioral therapy sort of construct. Circumstances are neutral, right? What is around you, external to you, has nothing to do with you. But they do trigger our thoughts, right? Our thoughts are based, our thoughts about the circumstance are based around experiences you've had before, relationships you've had before, choices you've made before that have wired your brain into a way to create thoughts about that circumstance. Are those thoughts true? They may not be. Could they have been true then? Yes. Are they true now? Maybe not. You are the one who has to decide that. You get to control your thoughts. Your thoughts cause your feelings. 
your feelings cause and drive your actions, your inaction or your reactions, okay? Our actions or inaction or reactions are what create your results. So what do you control in all of that? Your thoughts. Food does not love you. You are in a one-sided relationship just like that boy in high school, <laughs> okay? You know now it was best to walk away from that. <laughs> you will know later it was, it was best to walk away from this. Lots of reasons to love food. It does not love you back. If it is not getting you where you need to go, you need to walk away. Make better choices, okay? Here's an example. Still warm from the oven, chocolate chip cookies from a favorite patient or client are sitting on your desk. You feel and you think and you act and you get a result out of that circumstance, right? Like those cookies did not choose to be on your desk. <laughs> they did not say, Mary, go give this and put that on that doctor or on that person's desk, right? So you have the choice of the thoughts you want to make. One could be, I love it when she brings these cookies. I was trying to watch what I'm going to eat, but these cookies are irresistible and I deserve them because I've been working really hard today and no one's appreciating me. So these cookies are, I'm going to do this. Okay. So the feeling out of that thought is desire. It's want. It's appreciation. Urge to eat, right? You can sit with urges and not act on them, by the way. Um, so then you eat the cookies and probably not just two, right? At least half a dozen over the course of the day. This is followed by what triggering of more thoughts, negative thoughts about myself for going off my eating plan, about shame, about my willpower failing, all those things. All those are all thoughts. They're not real. So the result of that is an erosion of my relationship with myself because I went against what I had decided to do ahead of time. So I continue to think of the cookies as irresistible and I continue to lose weight and I continue to think badly about myself when in fact the cookies were just a circumstance and I'm the one that put that onto that. So the good news is that those thoughts are optional. So if you don't believe me, it may seem like there's no other way around to think about those cookies, right? If that were the case, then every person in the whole world would think the same damn thing about those cookies. <laughs> But someone who gets migraines from eating chocolate would have had very different thoughts about those cookies. Maybe something like, those cookies smell good, but I don't want a horrible headache. It's going to incapacitate me for like two days. There's no chance of me eating them, right? So in this case, the person has weighed her options. She felt the urge. She delayed the urge. She chose her thought. She recognized that five minutes of sugar rush bliss that she's going to get from eating those cookies is not worth the consequence of dealing with a terrible migraine. Her feeling with having made her choice for herself is maybe she's proud of herself. I don't know what she's feeling. Maybe she's proud of herself. Maybe she's feeling strong and powerful. The result is she doesn't eat them. The result is she doesn't get that terrible migraine. Are you guys getting me? Someone give me like a thumbs up or like a love or give me something that you guys are watching and listening and appreciating this. Any questions, anybody? Okay. Um, some of us don't really want to believe that certain food doesn't serve us because of this like love affair we have with them. Just like breaking off again, that long-term relationship, it can cause a lot of pain, right? And we think that we'll have to experience a lot more discomfort and negative emotion if we don't have the foods we love around us to rescue and comfort us. So by doing that, we're giving our power over to these foods. So it basically, basically boils down to this. Do you want to keep your love, love affair with food that you know is not serving you, these highly palatable processed foods that some old man, old white guy with a mustache, as I always call him, in his lab coat somewhere concocted for you to be spending money and fat and overweight and metabolically unwell and hormonally unbalanced and ill? Do you want to keep your love affair with that false food, knowing that the downside is the indefinite continuation of your weight struggle? Do you? Or do you want to not only think about those foods differently, but lose the desire to use them to make your life more tolerable? Do you want to learn how to deal with the issues that you are dealing with, to feel the feelings, 
to feel the urges, to feel the discomfort, to deal with it, to clear it, to confront it, to, you know, to, to love it, whatever it is that you need to do instead of pushing it down with food that you know is not serving your long-term health. Either one is fine. As long as you are fully recognizing and taking responsibility for the fact that you are creating your reality. I completely understand you not wanting to do the work to lose the desire for foods that don't serve you. But if you choose this, accept the fact that if you will, you will likely struggle with food, your weight, and likely your relationship with yourself for the rest of your life. Because this isn't just about food, right? If this was just about food, we would all be over it, right? We'd all know what to do. We just wouldn't eat it. It's not about that. It's about you understanding who you are, about what you want your future to be, about what you want your mind to be. It's learning how to choose your thoughts is more about learning not to eat cookies. <laughs> it's learning about who you are and who you want to be in the world and who someone else is that's near you. It's about what your community is like. It's understanding that the circumstances don't control you and that you get to choose your thoughts that create the results in your life. So if you want to do this with food, if you want to choose your health future, if you want to prevent and reverse disease, I'm your girl. <laughs> Along the way, everything else in your life is going to change. So I just warn you, if you want to come to Holist and have us help you how to revise your body and your mind using real weight science, real neuroplasticity, real supportive accountability, we are here for you. I warn you, we may change everything else in your life for the better. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. So um, my two other announcements. Um, number one, um, we have a mindful eating webinar coming out on October 3rd, 11 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Um, it's going to be me. It's not on Facebook. you got to register for it. Um, it's going to be about an hour probably. I'm going to wing it, but I think it's probably about an hour. I've got a slide deck. We've got an ebook. We're going to learn together seven tips for how to strategically mindfully eat, understanding how to identify the sensations that are coming up for you, understanding how food um, accepts you, um, and how food does not accept you and how to make your choices on being mindful and conscious in the moment that you're choosing or not choosing to eat. If you want to join me, um, drop the word mindful into the comments and me or JC or uh, Tamber will hop in to your messenger and send that registration on over to you. Um, the last announcement is that we have, I think I looked maybe three or four more, like I looked right before I got on, maybe three or four more appointments uh, slots in the next two days for strategy calls with us. Um, these are free. They're just us figuring out kind of what your next steps are in terms of where you are with your weight journey, whether you're trying to lose weight or whether you're trying to gain endurance um, for what athletics you have to do. We have people in our program who have no weight to lose but are semi-pro athletes. We have people who have 100 pounds to lose. So um, what we do is applicable to a lot of people. Um, if, it's basically a 12-week university-level course around mindset, around food, and around weight science. Uh, lots of personal accountability with coaching. It's super fun, wonderful tribe. Um, I'm not, my brother works with Native Americans. He told me not to say that anymore. It's really hard. Okay. My wonderful family. Um, and, um, we'd love to have you part of it, but we only take people who we know who are really a fit. So if you want to call, um, drop the word action into the comments and one of us will reach out to you. Troubleshoot a little bit over messenger just to make sure that you're the right fit. If we think you are, you can grab one of those last spots in our strategy calls. We'll banter a little bit on the phone, just kind of dig in a little bit where you are and what you need. Um, if we think you're a good fit and you find that what we're doing sounds interesting and you're ready to act now and really do the work, we'll bring you in and uh, change your life. So if that sounds good, drop a note and um, I'm going to go swim in a heated pool that my dogs are allowed to, uh, to come into with us for my kid's birthday. My one-year-old puppy like looks like she wants to murder us when we're in this pool because she's allowed in there. She comes around the outside. She's like, like a 70-pound chocolate lab and she like dives onto us like this, like onto us, including the children like while we're swimming. It's, she's like, it's like she's like, this is my chance to murder them. <laughs> so that's going to be happening for the next hour. So um, have a lovely day. I'm sure I will see you guys tomorrow for another training. Ciao, ciao.